Om Shanti. Today evening, our topic is very interesting, going beyond fear. All of us here today have at one or more times faced fear and overcome it. And I'd like to begin with a small story. Um, when I was young, we had a beautiful big home and we could see a stars. And at that time, I didn't have a son who was interested in astronomy, but I would look up at the stars and it was really dark. As those of you who are interested in celestial objects, you would know that the sky needs to be really dark to see some beautiful stars. And I was gazing at those stars. It was really dark. And suddenly in front of me, I saw some figure and I just ran inside. <laughs> All my love for celestial objects dissolved in that second. And <laughs> I went inside and I locked the doors and I had nobody to go out. And uh, I had my family, my parents, and I said, don't go out, clear, close all the curtains and you know, shut all the windows and there's something out there. <laughs> and of course, my father um, at the time, he said, okay, I'm gonna go and just peep out of the window and look who's there. I'm not gonna go out. And I was screaming on top of my voice. You know, I loved my dad so much. I didn't want him to go into any harm's way. And so I screamed and screamed and I didn't let him go. So he said, okay, I'm just gonna peep outside and I'm gonna look out. And so he said, okay, yes, there is something, but it's not moving anymore. <laughs> so um, I said, it doesn't matter. You don't go out. We're going to look at it during the day. And he goes, okay. And then after 10 minutes, I told him, okay, uh, go and look out because it's near my window, near my bedroom window. So <laughs> I don't know what happens at night. So again, I was very scared and focused on everyone's well-being too. So I said, okay, we'll all go out with you. <laughs> as if we were <laughs> soldiers and would protect him. So we joined him and um, he put on all the lights and even, <laughs> even made sure, you know, I, I was carrying a little wooden stick so I could protect my father. I was so brave at that time. <laughs> so, and with the lights, we saw that there was an old branch that had fallen off the tree and had actually stood in the uh, moist soil and it stood <laughs> like a human being. So my first chapter of extreme fear <laughs> was all dissolved. And my dad said, look, there's nothing here. So there's nothing to be scared of. It's a part of our tree branch. And I was so relaxed and I came home and I said, um, it's good I went out with you. <laughs> Being of my age at the time, I thought, oh, good. I was with my dad and I, I saw it with my own eyes. He's safe, I'm safe, everyone is safe. So at one stage or the other, every one of us has some fear. And it's nothing. And um, before I go on to my PowerPoint presentation, Sister Elizabeth, do you want me to open up the PowerPoint presentation? Do you want me to share it with everybody? Is that okay? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. So I'll be sharing with you uh, short presentation, but it's uh, just a PowerPoint presentation and it doesn't have much in it. There'll be more talking, but I would like you to see the screen and some pictures, which we all relate to.
Can you see my screen? You may want to go to view and click presentation view. At the far left, yeah. Yeah. Slide only. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> so based on our topic today, uh, going beyond fear, and here is an example of the, the story that I shared. Uh, it's just a hand and there's a shadow, but we see a frightening figure, a scary figure out of it. And we humans try to interpret it and make it real for us. So F-E-A-R, I was just informed by a lovely sister <laughs> that uh, this full poem stands for false evidence appearing real. And it comes from our very well-known author and um, a yogi to Raj Yogi, Mike George, he has mentioned it. So I wanted to just share how real it is. It's just a false evidence of things that appear to us that they are real. So that's fear. What happens in fear that the child over there is just not herself? She doesn't have the sweet smile that she has. And she is scared beyond. I mean, all her expressions there say so much more. As we say, a picture is thousand words. So with fear, as all of us know, when we are fearful, what we start seeing in front of us is completely completely out of the perception that we have, whatever we know about a place, a thing, we associate it and create a picture in us. And then we start visualizing it in our head. And then we also manifest it the extent that we can actually start seeing it in front of us. So fear can be very harmful to us. And I use a very harsh word harmful because it sometimes can damage you to an extent where you don't remain yourself. And at that time, what you are capable of doing also diminishes. It's practically crippling you of doing anything. In fact, all it does is to empower you with something that is not you and actually brings out the worst because when you're fearful, you don't know what to do. And because it's not you, you cannot bring out the qualities in you. So whatever potential you have is also not there to help you. With fear, we all know, you know, we have fears, all of us have of one thing or the other. And it could be of even just simple things like doing, you know, wanting to do something, but do not want to get out of the comfort zone, out of the box. And so we stay where we are, out of the fear that it may, may not, it may not be the comfort where I am. And then you worry about it, you know, what if, what if I do that? I may not be where I am. I may be in a worse place. And there could be doubts, huge doubts, because we usually, as we are humans, we uh, think at a faster speed than what we can do. 
So we have all this network, a web of thoughts that keeps going and we have doubts. And then of course, there's worry, there is uh, doubt. And then obviously it's not the best that happens to us. Fear can be so damaging as we all know that it can even affect our regular day-to-day -day life, our health. If you're fearful of a person around you, then you know that you're not able to speak, you're not able to express. You do everything out of fear and it may not be the one that you want to portray or be with. And slowly and steadily, it affects your personality. It is definitely fear we know, you know, unless and until we approach it, which we'll speak in the next half hour or in few minutes, it's definitely not the truth because we did see how the shadow created by just the fingers looks more fearful than the, than the hand itself. Same thing here, there is absolutely no truth. You know, when there is fear because it's not true, it always appears to be, again, it's appearing. It's our own perception. We make it, we manifest it. So then obviously our thoughts are creating a situation or um, an object that is, that is not true. So when it's not true, there is no truth. We know that everything else that comes with falsehood is all shiny, glittery, and more to making us away from truth. So if it's not truth, then all the other qualities that go with truth also are absent. With the fear, there's no love. Look at that little child who's so timid. He wants the teddy bear with him, but he's closing his eyes. <clears throat> he feels that if he closes his eyes, he won't be seen. And he's hiding. So it could be someone who is taking care of the child who has brought that fear in him. And the, his escape, because we humans have a way you know, just like everything in the nature, we ha have our own ways to deal with fear. And so he's trying to hide from that fear. And when you hide something, it's not true, it's um, not open. There is no freedom, obviously, because there's no love. There is no trust. Look at that girl having those fearful eyes. She's not sure what's coming on to her. So all the qualities that do not go with truth are all present when there is fear. So since we know what's fear, we all have experienced fear, I would um, like to share how this fear I had, I had fear of everything when I was growing up. I was very protected. So I was not um, knowing many things. And I was, I'm a city girl in Mumbai, from Mumbai in India. And um, was very protected. So I was not aware of so many things, even the insects. I would get scared of insects. And we would make sure our house was free of insects. 
because we didn't want all the screaming and yelling and <laughs> with insects. So even little things, we would get scared of. And I was very fearful. But as I grew up and came across, um, moved away from India, and I actually moved first to New Zealand before coming to USA. And somebody told me in New Zealand that uh, there are no reptiles. And I said, oh, great. I'll never move out of this place because I feared reptiles a lot. Just seeing them in pictures, in movies, uh, I had no idea <laughs> what happens or which. And I never looked at pictures or the fear. Just hearing stories, you know, somebody was bitten. Um, and same thing with the ocean. Oh, Pacific Ocean is so beautiful. But my first question, because I had seen Jaws back then in college <laughs> in India, and since I had gone near Pacific <laughs> Ocean, I had no idea. I just asked somebody, I hope there are no sharks that come over here. <laughs> so I was scared of everything. But as I grew up and I started knowing more things and I moved out to, to places, I started understanding, you know, more of nature, how everything works. As we grow up, we come across in life so many other things. Uh, we start becoming adults and we want to be out and explore. But sometimes we come across people or incidences, <clears throat> excuse me, that even though we would like to attempt and do things, there are preconceived um, ideas we humans have which stop us from even attempting things. And here I just gave some examples of um, insects and uh, fishes and everything, but even in our regular life, if we want to um, at workplace, maybe a new project, uh, if there is some person who is more dominating not approachable. Um, our first instinct is to hesitate, not go, not take the initiative to do a certain thing. We may be interested in the project, but we choose not to because we are fearful that that person may say something to us and it may hurt us may damage us. We don't even know the person, why the person is that way, or because the way the person is, we might actually gain something, or it may help us because we humans have a tremendous, um, abundant um, qualities that we have not been explored. We don't even know. And I, and I say this with experience, as I shared with you how I was, and now I can share with you um, a few more things. When I became a parent and I was alone with my son, and I never drove in rain or in um, um, dark, that was like I told my husband to do that because again, fear. Don't know where I would drive or because New Zealand roads are also hills and it's more like a San Francisco. So I would um, fear that the hill, driving on a hill, I might go at a fast speed. I may not have control over the speed. And so rain and uh, uh, dark 
hours might make it worse. I had no glasses at that time, but I still feared. Um, but when my son was sick and uh, he had a temperature of 104 degrees and I had to take him to emergency, there was, it was raining. It was raining cats and dogs. It was very heavy. And I had to pull out the car and get out. And my neighbors had a really huge dog. Again, I got scared of dogs too. And we had to get out of our house. And, you know, those times we had those, we didn't have the automatic carriages. And so I had to go and open from outside the garage to pull my car out. And I didn't see the dog. I didn't hear the rain. I didn't see the dark time. I drove him to the emergency. All because my maternal instinct, you know, the love for my son. I wanted to protect him. I wanted to make sure he was safe. And those instincts took over me. The fear was overcome. And I actually went to the emergency. We spent the whole night there and we came back in the morning. But I was amazed at what I had done at my own self. Um, how did I do it? But then, of course, as a mother, I said, oh, it was for my son. And I kept quiet. I said, okay, I can do it. Once I knew I could do it, I started driving <laughs> in dark hours, could get all the shopping done, grocery done, could go and pick him up from games. <laughs> I could do everything in dark hours, even in rain. So I realized that because we humans have these qualities in us, we can overcome that fear. And um, <clears throat> there are many stories, but me alone, I know you all have your own stories and I hope to give you some time to, to share your stories because I would love to hear. Um, but I think we are approaching um, I think I want to take a little pause, Sister Elizabeth, and um, get into some meditation. <clears throat> Since I brought out these qualities, I wanted to meditate a little bit. And then we can talk on how we go beyond fear and um, what brings out um, if, we, if we are not fearful anymore. Um, so... Um, if you are, I'm sure you're sitting in a comfortable place, but relax and think, <clears throat> excuse me, and imagine that you walk along the path of nature. It's evening, a beautiful golden light is peeping through the trees. And the soft breeze is flowing. And you continue on the path. The yellow light is following you. And you feel safe.
I, the being, I am with myself, looking around, enjoying, the beauty all around me. And the beautiful music that is in sync with me. I happen to see other creatures, living creatures, around me too. Small insects, dogs, a beautiful deer running at its fastest speed. I like watching it. But as I move forward, the light is changing and it starts getting dark. The beautiful trees are still the same, but I see them now more darker and I start seeing shadows I never saw them before I never see them when I walk the trail My steps become slow. I do not hear the soft music of breeze. I think of what's beyond on the path. my mind deviates and suddenly there are millions of thoughts that rush into my mind I have already manifested it to be a dark, lonely road. And now my speed is slower than an ant that may be around somewhere, me. I hesitate to put the right foot forward. I look back and that path is dark too. Fear has creeped in. I become still. I can no longer think and I'm unable even to move. I, the being, is now completely 
fearful. As I look up at the sky, I see the stars and I see a beautiful white light. It's a beautiful moonlight. And the ray of that soft white light makes me calm. I feel relaxed and I continue looking at that white light. As I look at the light, I now see the nature in that white light. I slowly feel the soft breeze by the beam connected to that light. Feel energized. And put my one foot forward to begin the walk that I started. I continue looking at the light. and feel less dense. I continue small steps, still holding the light. with me. The more I connect with the light, the stronger I feel. I can feel peace taking over me. And I feel stronger. The beautiful light starts beeping through the trees and I can see my path. I being feel empowered with the connection of light.
I see everything clearly. I am not scared. I feel I have someone with me and I feel powerful. I can complete this walk by myself. As I walk the path, I am not scared of anything. It's as if the nature is cooperating with me. I do not see any animals that would harm me. I do not see any shadows. either being in the light can overcome the fear. I am the being that can make this path possible for me. Oh, Shanti. So in this meditation, as we, the being, we can overcome the fear. And there are different ways that we can overcome the fear. One of the well-known tool that helps us to overcome our fear and we can go beyond it is our faith. Faith in something takes us a long way. Faith in someone that we trust. No matter what, we have the faith that that being is with us. And that secure feeling empowers us and can make us do things that we never imagined we could do. In other words, we have this unlimited courage that we can take higher and bigger leaps and do unimaginable things only with the trust and faith. Once we have the faith and the trust, we only think of positive, determined thoughts. Because all of us have a habit. We do a self-talk. Sometimes it's not that good, but we can change it. We, the being, are capable of changing the self-talk. Make it a positive, determined talk. 
That is one way of going beyond fear. The more we have a determined thought, we trust and behold the hand of whom we trust. The courage makes us do things that may become the example for others. And there are many of us who look up to somebody who can show us the way and are happy to join hands with us and move with us. When we get one person like that, there are others that have, go with us too. And it brings about a power. That's the power of unity of like beings, people who have similar thoughts, similar ideas, similar goal, and the same faith. We form a community that can bring about a positive change once we begin with a small step, a small positive step, and it becomes a powerful step, slowly and steadily. We take baby steps, one step at a time, and definitely it happens. All of us like to be in a loving, caring environment. And where there is love, there is care, there is faith, there is trust. Impossible becomes possible. There could be a huge task ahead of us, but it can be accomplished with the faith, the trust, the positive power. And so these are some of these, we all have them, we all know them, and we all have used this. It's not just few of us, but each one of us in our life we have accomplished this. We have gone beyond the fear. And we are here today. Wherever we are, we have overcome that fear and made it possible. So I think this brings us to the happy, true self. This is what we are. And once we are the original, then we see all the potential that comes out of us. And seeing a smiling, happy face changes the mood of even the one who is seeing it. So there's a huge link of um, chain with smile that brings one and all together and can help to overcome the fear. You know, there are many, many, many movies and stories and books and literature written on um, many great people who have overcome all these things. This is just a little simple thing that I shared, how um, I saw it and I shared it with you. I know there have been huge talks of uh, people, very well-known people, um, who have handled the subject. And they have given so many tips um, and have also spoken from their experiences. But I just shared uh, what I experienced and how I came uh, beyond the fear when I came to uh, United States, I was with my little son 
And I have shared this story with, I think, almost half the world <laughs> because I keep sharing this. Um, I had, I used to be in Midwest when I came first and uh, it snowed and um, it was late in the evening and uh, we were given um, notices that uh, be careful, don't go uh, to the parking lots alone, especially female uh, students or uh, faculty. And uh, it happened so that um, I did get out with a few friends, but they went off quickly because in um, it was first snow and they had all the right gear and I did not. So I, it took me a little longer. And sure enough, there was somebody following me, but I had faith. I had faith in the Supreme and I just said his name as if I would call out my friend and surely he came to my help. Suddenly there were security cars, there were people coming out of the cars from nowhere. I had not seen them, but they came to help me there again, united, you know, good people around you gave me power. And the fear, which was in the form of, I don't know who that person was or whatever, but I had the fear and it just dissolved. And um, I overcome that fear and I drove the car in snow and came back home. And from that day, um, I realized that having that faith and holding on to that faith and having the trust that he is with me all the time, like a friend, like a father, um, like, like my child, you know, sometimes we um, speak to our children and um, they teach us many things, how to overcome fear too. I mean, my son never got scared of any insects. Uh, once upon once there was a huge um, reptile like looking thing <laughs> uh, and he just pushed it away with his um, uh, shoes you know basically he just walked towards it and it just moved away it did not come forward and I was like having <laughs> all sorts of different things in my hand and squeezing them and <laughs> But he taught me, you know, how to face it, just go forward. Maybe that fear um, uh, is not fear. You know, by becoming strong, we even make the fear fearful. So the fear <laughs> goes away. Um, I think these have been my tools to go beyond fear. And I shared them with you. I have heard um, very, very um, eminent people speak about this topic and how they overcome fear, which you all must have heard too. This topic has been um, um, for everybody, even in small gatherings, big gatherings, talks. I know college students are told how to overcome the fear of any subject. And I, I used to teach in Sac State too. So I knew so many students who got scared of chemistry. I used to teach chemistry. And it was lovely be, that I could share how I looked at the subject. Uh, they were so um, confused and fearful of not passing the subject and not being able to make the grades um, to their uh, you know, goal because some, some students wanted to go for nursing and chemistry was a part of it. They had to uh, clear those courses. And I said, you know, if you're eating on a table, the table is made up of carbon. And um, if you're having salads, it's a mixture and you mix. But once you make some compound, it doesn't get back to its original state. And they, they were like, what? So simple things, you know, taking baby steps. Um, they got slowly and steadily interested in chemistry. And 
I was so pleased to see them when they pass with flying colors. So um, it's just a fear. Once they knew uh, it isn't that bad, they improved, they did well. They are very good um, uh, 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 nursing teachers. They actually, a couple of my students teach and a couple of students are in San Francisco, <laughs> UCSF working there. So um, they, they did complete their chemistry. <laughs> they did clear the chemistry uh, courses and uh, are doing well now. So we all humans um, have our own individual way to go beyond this fear and make the best that we want to be because that is what we are. That's, that's our true self. And we all say to each other, it's easier said than done, but we all have done it. We have taken those steps, one step at a time, and we have gone beyond that fear. We have made fear fearful. So <laughs> we empowered ourselves so much with the qualities, the powers, the strength, and Fear is no longer fear. There's nothing uh, like fear. So if we can stick to that, I know it's sometimes in life, uh, not everything uh, is as easy as this. There is, There are uh, major events that happen in life that it does happen that you do fear. Um, and but if we look at, look at it with a different perspective, those of us who have a faith and um, have trust can always change our way of thinking. Um, faith in God, faith in Supreme, um, because we have to keep going. And there has to be a better way uh, to explain it to ourselves. We are all adults, have crossed life uh, stages. And uh, there has to be a way to explain it to those whom we love, who go through difficult times. Death is one such. Um, there could be different ways and um, people... Uh, leave their bodies and it can be a fearful thing especially for children and uh, we as adults who understand um, we can explain in our own way make it make it relative and help them uh, overcome it if um, we can show it with example great but just a little calming um, understanding um, you know, just a little smile or sometimes not even saying a word, but just the presence and the presence of, um, you know, care, just, just the presence making them feel you're there for them, just sitting along with them or just listening, listening to the fears. I think these are all the tools that you and I use. There, there may be many books and um, stories other than this, which may be really um, using excellent words and <laughs> good um, literature and <laughs> languages. But I think everyone is very, very, um, you know, um, innocent every one of us has that innocence of child in us and we all like that true and original um, being in another individual and we appreciate if they are more natural uh, more genuine when they say something and we appreciate that it may not have those flowery languages in the words or anything, but just the 
the just the understanding the sharing of love compassion and being and supporting helps to reduce that fear and brings the power and it makes a person the best they, they are and they can make something that um, it's unimaginable sometimes we look at it and we say I never imagined you know that my child could do this I never thought that he could do this where did that come from it's the love the support that we give we help them to go beyond the fear and uh, bring out the best in them so I think uh, at this, I'll stop. And I just want to um, open up to any questions and uh, share your stories. And we can have a, a family talk, you know, just as we all speak in family, we can share. And I would like to listen to your stories of how you overcome or went beyond the fear. With that, uh, thank you. And uh, Sister Elizabeth. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you for your comment. Would anyone like to share? I have a little story. I can't get my picture on. I don't know how to do it. It's not working. Oh, no know. worries, Caroline. How nice. Hi. How nice. Hi. <laughs> I really like meditation with the light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do some uh, later too, before we finish. I just wanted to listen to some other stories besides mine. And then we can all do a little bit of a, uh, meditation at the end too, if everyone likes it. I just had a similar little, it's a short story, similar to the one you had with your son, where the love actually brought out, took away your fear. And this was a situation where I live in a retreat center. And there was a fire across the street. One day there was, we just discovered there was a little spot and then that spot became two spots, three spots and it kept moving. And then it eventually got to a telephone pole. And at that point, the, another sister was using a hose to water down the grass so that it wouldn't come across the street and come on our property. And so I got a hose and I was there and we were both kind of shaking and I, I, uh, I just was thinking at one point, I was thinking, should I get my car, put my things in it and get out of here? And <laughs> I just thought, no, I can't. I, I want to stay and help. As soon as I had the thought to stay and help, it's almost like there was this absolute uh, peace and uh, serenity inside. And it was as though I was accepting the fire even. I don't know. It was just like there wasn't any more fear. So it was like my heart opened and the fear went away because there was no room for it. <laughs> Absolutely. You yeah. went beyond it and overcome it. Right. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. I know it's, yeah, big, big devastating things to happen. And we have seen that so much more in California with fire and floods and yeah, yeah true. But again, we are humans, you know, we overcome it. So there is everyone has this instinct of their own way how they overcome it so it's amazing well I wasn't expecting that to happen but when the love came in it was like I was free absolutely yeah we have this abundance of qualities in us once we bring out one good quality all its friends come out <laughs> yeah anyone else wants to share
are your thoughts you know how how we if there are any other thoughts that how we can go beyond fear please feel free to share i hope you can um unmute yourselves right yeah Om Shanti. <laughs> Thank you for a very simple, beautiful presentation. <clears throat> Thank you. I want to share my uh, fear. Sure. I always had the fear of public speaking. Uh, and I overcame it. And I want to share what worked for me. <clears throat> First thing that worked for me is understanding why I was worried why I had fear of speaking. Uh, and looking back, I now know that I was just holding on to my false image. You know, I had this ego that I have to look better. I have to be smart. I thought I was smart and I had to be good, cannot make a mistake. That would just put a tremendous pressure on me. So understanding, what was uh, causing the fear, that's one. Uh, second thing that worked for me is to let go. So I just let go of the uh, false image that I'm holding and just be nat natural. So I realized that when I'm natural, then uh, I look better even if I make, made a mistake, you know. Uh, and most important, I realized that when I um, <clears throat> when I let go, let go of the ego or falsehood and just be natural, then uh, I create a space inside me, and that space uh, gets filled with the inner powers that, like you, uh, Nina, sister, you were mentioning, that inner powers that just fills you from within. And it becomes your talent, actually. You know, no matter what, you just you flow like you just speak out of uh, not falsehood, but being your true self. Uh, so that helped me tremendously overcome a lot of this fear. I still have fear. You know, I speak on the computer, but I don't know how I would speak uh, in <laughs> in life in front of people. You know, <laughs> but it's a lesson. Uh, yes. And so that's I wanted to share that. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Give me a second, everybody. I'm going to switch on the light here. I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was so dark suddenly. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Oh, somebody wrote a, oh, nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Om Shanti. Yeah, uh, Om Shanti. Hi, I just wanted to say thank you to Vinod for sharing that as well as to you, Nina. Um, mm -hmm. because I am in Toastmasters and I tell you it has been a nightmare <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I've done two talks and have spoken up on different you have to play different roles so I think what you said Vinod uh, about trying to hold an image up or perform Mm -hmm. versus being natural and yourself is being has been my battle I'm getting it's getting easier because I would be fearful for a few days before going to Toastmasters <laughs> you know <laughs> I get into anxiety and yeah so but I'm still going I'm still trying I'm still determined to overcome the fear of speaking in public Thanks. Yeah, it's wonderful to know you're going to Toastmasters. I am a distinguished Toastmaster myself. So I have been through Toastmasters too. And uh, yes, there's always fear of speaking. But you know what? I can give you one tip for that. 
<laughs> so thank you, uh, Brother Vinod, for <laughs> speaking of another subject that's so close to me. I love to talk about Toastmasters. So that also I also had fear of public speaking, and uh, I overcome that, sister, by uh, just imagining that you know uh, everyone. There's well, first I would imagine there's nobody in the room. Just have that picture in front of you. It's just you. There's nobody else. Don't look at um, you know uh, many people at one time. Look at one person. Actually, it's a good Toastmaster technique too. That when you look at one person, they you feel that person feels that you're actually speaking to them. So then you know they are more interested in what you're seeing. So you're captivating the audience. So there, there are a few features in there too. So I hope you continue with Toastmasters and I hope this trick works for you. Look at only one person. Don't look at the whole room full of people. That may be a little overwhelming. <laughs> so I tried that and it worked for me. So I hope it works for you too. Yes, okay. Well, I have had that, uh, you know, the deer with the headlights in your eyes kind of feeling looking out at everybody and just freezing so I've experienced making a fool of myself in front of everyone and actually you know having that fear manifest so but they're very supportive so yeah yeah everyone goes through that though just you know don't take it too much to your heart another thing is you know we keep saying to ourselves right we, we shouldn't take it personally so I think you know, everyone makes mistakes. We are all humans. So it's okay. You learn from mistakes. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I think Toastmasters is wonderful. Please continue. And I can help you with other tricks. And uh, it has helped me too. Especially I joined it for corporate uh, um, talks, you know, like I had to do uh, a lot of presentation with external uh, stakeholders. And so I joined it, even though I am a teacher, I could speak in front of students, but corporate world is different. So I joined for that. It's lovely. I love to talk about Toastmasters too. <laughs> That's another, you know, very, very good way. Uh, I made very good friends. Um, it was networking and good friendship that are still there so right. there's a lot to gain yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you you're welcome anybody else wants to add something else yeah i i'd like to uh sure thank you, sure thank you uh, uh sister nina and uh sister elizabeth and everyone that's uh shared um um I, I think as I've uh, traveled through this journey, um, I've, it, it helps to hear that other people have fear, you know, uh, as someone already mentioned earlier, um, uh, the, the fear that I'm still working on is the fear of other people's opinion of me and how I look, you know, and that's probably the, the most challenging uh, and some days are better than others, and that's okay. Uh, I continue to chip away at it. Um, and I've also learned that it's okay to say, gee, I don't know, can I think about that? It took me a long time to get those words out of my mouth. Or can I have the weekend to think about that and I'll get back to you? And I, I, can, I can't remember every time I've said that, but I don't remember one time anybody saying, no, I need an answer right now. Nobody's ever said that to me, you know? Um, and those are just tools, I guess. We're, we're sharing some tools, you know? Um, um, and, and fear still comes up for me, you know? Absolutely. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough that last night, I'll finish up with this, because this was pretty powerful. Something happened. Um, today, but I was reading uh, a portion of Avidev uh, last night, and it was one section of the book where there's a bus, there's a bus accident, and 
the children that are on that bus remain very calm, you know? It's a beautiful story. And I don't know, I, I, I believe that it's not a coincidence that I read that portion of that book last night. And then I went, to, I had a dentist appointment this morning and I thought I was just getting a cleaning. Uh, and uh, he had said something about, oh, this gum is bothering me. Well, when they looked at it, my tooth had cracked in two places and, and it became a, 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 you know, a half, half hour, 45 minute cleaning turned into three hours of being at the dentist. And all sorts of things were said, you know, well, it could just be a cracked tooth and we could salvage it, put a crown on it. You may need a, a, a root canal you may lose the tooth, you know, and um, you know, so grateful that I learned, I heard, I read that story, that portion of the story last night because I just connected, you know, I connected to my source and I just let go. As somebody said earlier, you know, that I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be okay. And I just had to let go of the outcome of that. And, um, and though I was there for three hours, it did turn out okay. I only need a crown. And they were able to work on it immediately. Um, and then I'll go back next week and they're gonna place, they had a temporary crown on now. And I was able to just remain calm. And uh, I'm so grateful for that story because I just thought, well, these sweet children can do this and they're in a bus accident. Why can't I connect with my source right now? you know, and, and just remain calm and just let be what it's going to be. That may change tomorrow, <laughs> you know, with a different incident, but I was, I was grateful. I hope that I remember what happened today and I can, and I can, and I can carry that through into another, another day or another week or another month, etc. So, um, I think that's all I wanted to share, but I really thank you. This is a, this is a pretty, um, pretty important topic that I think a lot of people really uh, go through, uh, and uh, and it's wonderful to be able to hear other people talking about it as you presented yourself at the beginning of the talk. So thank you so much for doing this tonight. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate, it. and it's so nice, you know, when you you read the story, it you thought about it. When we share these little stories with each other, they help us. You know, sometimes we remember and they help us through. And then being connected to the source and knowing all this information, we know that there's always something good happening. I mean, I was just thinking about your dental appointment. You know, you got to know what's wrong, but it was nothing big. Uh, it's still taken care of, you know, so there's always something good. <laughs> And these stories, that's why it's so important, you know, we share our stories, so they help us. Absolutely. Thank you for being yours. <laughs> Great. It's so lovely. Anybody else wants to share? This is so lovely. I, I love to hear stories too. Uh, thank you so much for your comments. I appreciate <laughs> Okay, so if uh, you would rather listen and enjoy the meditation, I'm fine. We can get back to meditation. Let's sit back and enjoy um, ourselves in med meditation. I, <clears throat> a light a beautiful star, I am connected to the supreme light. I the being have the powers that I get to know by being connected 
to the light. The ever beautiful, the ever shining, bright light. I see me more clearly than I bond and connect to the supreme light. I am a peaceful being. I am the kind being. I am a caring being. I belong. Here, yeah. I am comfortable, relaxed, and peaceful. Everything is just the way it should be. I am okay. I have no fears, no stress. I am relaxed, peaceful, and happy. The stronger my bond with the Supreme. The powerful I am. I can use all the powers at the right moment to overcome and go beyond. The fear that creeps in sometimes. I can do it. I am light. And I'm connected to the supreme light. I am just the way I am the best. The loving, caring, fearless being. I 
I am light an ever shining star just like my father the supreme As I come back to this awareness, I share this peaceful, fearless, happy waves with everything around me and beyond me. Om Shanti.